Hello everyone, welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast. It's me, your host, Emily Morello. I'm so excited to be here today, as I always am, but especially when I have an expert guest on. Today, my guest's name is Danielle De La Valle, and she is a certified functional nutritional therapy practitioner. She's the founder and CEO of Your Wellness Academy, founder and lead content creator at, of Sacred Feminine Academy, and co-founder of Wellness Con, author of Happy Weight, public speaker, nutrition education program writer, instructor, of, and mentor. She does it all, I'm telling you. I actually found her from an interview. She was being interviewed on the Unbreakable View podcast by Meg Dahl, and that's when I learned about her book, Happy Weight. We talk a lot about that on this podcast, a lot about her businesses and how she decided to start her business and what her plans are moving forward, as well as a lot about individuality when it comes to nutrition, wellness, and figuring out what works for you. So let's just get right into the episode. It's really amazing and I know you will all love Danielle. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Honest Living Podcast, where we learn to be ourselves while serving our higher purpose. I'm your host, Emily Morello. I'm a full-time sales engineer and a part-time health and wellness enthusiast. On this podcast, you will hear from me and expert guests share vulnerable topics, discuss overall wellness, and give advice that will help you stay motivated and energetic. I hope you're excited and get ready to start living your best and most honest life. I would like to take a minute to talk to you about the sponsor for this episode, Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It is free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And Anchor distributes your podcast to every listening platform like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and much more without you doing a thing. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. I personally like to pre-record my episodes, type in the bios, place in the sponsorships, then schedule the episodes for a later date. It's easy, quick, and everything you will need to get your podcast rolling in one place. Download the Anchor app now or go to anchor.fm to get started. You won't regret it, I promise. All right. Well, thank you so much, Danielle, for being here today. It's been quite some time since our first conversation about having you on, and I'm so happy that we made it work and that you are here with me today. So thank you. Thank you, Emily. I'm so excited to be here, honestly. Great. And you're... I was talking to you a couple minutes ago how I found you, and I think you are one of the most inspiring women on the internet right now and in the health and wellness space, especially with um, everything that I've gone through this past year. It's amazing meeting women like you, even if it's virtually, because it's like going through hypothalamic amenorrhea when I'm forced to uncover a lot of stuff about bodies and about health that... I made up pretty much and um, figure out the truth behind what is right for me. It takes a lot of getting vulnerable and getting to know yourself. And that's what I've realized that I love about you is your ability to share and make everyone feel comfortable with themselves. Thank you so much. (laughs) That was the most amazing compliment and just gave me all of the feels. <laughs> no problem. I meant every single word of it, I swear. But before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself um, a little bit about who you are, what you do, and how you want the audience to know you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, first, again, thank you so much for having me. And I, I love that my book was what connected us. You mm-hmm. know, I think that that is just such a beautiful thing when I just see myself really as a service worker, right? You know, I'm just this vessel that's here to educate and spread information. So when I make authentic connections, it really, it it shows me what life's purpose really is. So I'm just so thrilled to be here holding space with you today. But yeah, I'm Danielle Delavalle. I'm a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. 
Um, I have been in the functional medicine space for seven years now, and my career has evolved quite a bit. So as I, as you know from the book, I started in a ketogenic uh, weight loss clinic for my first two years out of school, and then I was in private practice for a significant period of time after that, and started to see what was wrong with the wellness industry almost immediately after leaving the weight loss space because, you know, before then I had no idea, right? You know, I was like, sure, calories in, calories out, exercise, you know, the whole thing. Yep. And after seeing hundreds and hundreds of clients in those two years, I was like, oh no, I was like, this is societal conditioning. Um, I don't know. Can we curse on your podcast? Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay. I was like, fuck the patriarchy, Mm -hmm. beauty standards are awful, you know, and I went through this whole kind of unveiling, if you will. And so in my private practice, I started to cultivate a new narrative. And then that narrative started to kind of snowball. And I started talking about way more even beyond what other people were talking about in the wellness industry. So I started talking about body neutrality and period normalization and intersectional feminism and, you know, all of these, these different things, even death normalization, which is still really new to the Mm -hmm. wellness space. And so um, beyond that, I realized that education was where I was going to be the most effective. And so I run two online education companies now. I run Your Wellness Academy, which is accessible and affordable uh, wellness information. And it's in kind of bite-sized courses. We have over 65 courses right now, 27 different practitioners. And yeah, it's super fun. I love it. I love it. It's rooted in diversity and uh, inclusivity and accessibility. So it's just a really beautiful space. And then I also run Sacred Feminine Academy, which is a mentorship based education company. And so that's where I mentor women and help them kind of step into their power. So amazing. That sounds really incredible. And I was uh, doing more research this past, the past couple of weeks because like I've followed you on Instagram. I've read your book. I found your website, but just really like seeing you on even the nutritional therapy association and talking about your story there and on interviews, I'm like, wow, you really are just so inspiring. And I really appreciate, I know I already said that, but I really just do appreciate all the work you're doing. And I think it's so amazing how some of these topics that you have, they're, they're not the norm at all, you know? And I love that you feel confident enough to share and teach. And I think that takes a different type of power that only certain people can have. So I think that really shows how, how confident and how capable that you really are. Thanks, Emily. I really appreciate you saying that. And I I honestly am no different than any other person. I think I just, you know, experience trauma and loss at a very young age. And so it made me see that, you know, this life is only a blip. And so what do I have to lose, right? Other than just showing up complete and authentic. Yeah. So what did your business look like from the start then? Now that you have like your wellness academy and um, sacred feminine academy, how did it kind of transform into this? Or was it always, was this always the goal? I know you started at the ketogenic clinic and everything. It was not the goal, actually. When I first started and I was working in the keto clinic, this is seven years ago when keto wasn't really even on the map yet. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, kind of the bigger names had been there for a hot minute, but it wasn't like, cause keto had its day, right? Like a few years back, it was like, everyone knew about keto, but seven years ago, not too many people knew. And that's what I thought I was going to do. I was like, I'm going to be a keto specialist. I'm going to be a keto influencer. I'm going to do all of these different things. And I was really kind of at the time, more or less a basic bitch, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, (laughs) I'm going to do like inspirational workout videos and like the whole thing. And I think after me, just like I said, having this unveiling, it just totally changed my perspective. So it actually took me a long time to get confident 
in the fact that I was just a natural educator. Mm -hmm. And I think for some people that have a more, I would say quintessential organized education where they go to college and then they have the post-grad work where they know they want to be in education and then they do it and then it's no problem. Right. But that wasn't the case for me. I was like, what? I can do public speaking for a job. I can do education for a job. It was totally a, a kind of like an aberration that was really late in life because, you know, I'm, I'm 35 now. And so it was one of those things that just hit me and I realized it was more important for me to educate people. And so it just probably about two years ago after Happy Weight had kind of had its day and I was doing a heavy amount of public speaking, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, this is not sustainable. Yeah. Anyone who does public speaking for a career, unless they're getting paid big money, Mm -hmm. it is not energetically sustainable. It's exhausting traveling that much. And by October, I was at a retreat that I was speaking at and I was crying Mm -hmm. during one of the workshops because I was so exhausted. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can I be effective and educate? And that's when the online courses came. That's so smart. And especially, I mean... That with coronavirus going on right now too, it's like the online space is the place to be. It's amazing to have these in-person um, networks and jobs and anything in person too. That's very important. I feel like to have like that in-person communication. But what we'll never lose is some type of online community. I mean, I don't think the internet's going anywhere. And it's just the best way to reach more people. Like, I would have never found you if it weren't for this space, which is so incredible that we live on totally different coasts of the country. And I just happened to find you by listening to, I'm sure I would have found you if I didn't listen to Meg Dahl's podcast, but just from, you know, word of mouth and just by following different people. And then there you were and you came into my life at a very vulnerable state. So it was, it's been pretty amazing. That's the beauty of the internet is that you really can find these really deep and meaningful connections. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I honestly have to say that social media has been one of the catalysts for me to be able to do. People don't think about it this way, but I think about social media as ultimate shadow work. Yeah. It will present you with all of the things that you need to work on you know, in terms of like insecurities and, you know, all of this new information and all these things, but it will also, you know, at the same time, simultaneously be one of the most beautiful places where you can connect with, with humans that really will have an impact on your life. Mm -hmm, For sure. So why don't we get into the really what you hear a lot from women then that they find being their their triggers or the reason that they come to you? Why do they want to join your wellness academy? And why do they want to join Sacred um, Feminine Academy? Why do they seek you for this help? I think it's really kind of an interesting thing that they've really never experienced before. So at first, I'm I'm almost like a sideshow right? For the wellness industry. They're like, oh my God, this girl shares her period blood on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like what is happening? And so it's kind of like a train wreck, right? They can't really necessarily look away and they're intrigued. Some people find it to be inspiring because then it makes them normalize things in their life. And then others, like you said, you know, will be very triggered And some are excited for the trigger because those people are going to be the ones that are almost like the self-development junkies, Mm -hmm. right? They're like, I want to know why this makes me uncomfortable. I want to learn more. I want to change myself. I want to adapt. I really want to see what else is possible in my life. And some people aren't ready. And more recently, they definitely realized they weren't ready because I've been talking a lot about white supremacy on, um, on my, just everywhere on my podcast, on my page, you know, just being very fervently vocal about it. And that's because everything is wellness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Everything is wellness. And so I think what attracts people is 
the challenge, the challenge to go deeper, the challenge to want to pursue something more than what they know to be quote unquote normal about life. And they'll commit when they sign up, they're committing to themselves. They're not committing to me because I never tell anyone I'm an influencer. I Mm -hmm. never tell anyone I'm a healer or a guru or that I'm going to change their life. There's never any promise that's empty. It's more or less, if you sign up, you're signing up to commit to yourself Mm -hmm. for the very first time, which I'm sure you experienced when you read the book. Yeah, definitely. And I love that you bring up so much about first, like our our diet too, like the things that we've been feeding ourselves for so long and how it plays such a toll on our health that you don't know until you get educated. So do you want to speak on that a little bit? What are some issues that the common American diet has now and what are what are some results or some issues that you might see in yourself from eating this way for a while that you might not even know exists until years later? Absolutely. So unfortunately, because societal conditioning and false advertising and false, even falsified like medical research, our food pyramid and paradigm is just, it's not helping anyone. Our country is one of the sickest in the world. Mm -hmm. And for, I mean, for good reason, we're producing food that is not real food anymore. And we don't ever want anyone to like look at food as good or bad because we want people to have a healthy relationship with food. So I don't talk about calories and I don't talk about, you know, all the different macros and micros. I just talk about just nutritive property. Mm -hmm. Is a food nutrient dense or is a food nutrient poor? And most often, if your food isn't grown organically or isn't grown in its natural state, there's going to be no nutrient density to it in any way, shape, or form. And that doesn't mean that you have, like, everyone has to eat 100% organic all the time. It's not possible. And we don't want to create orthorexia, right? So, like, you still can eat out, you can still have a life, you know, all of these things. But what we want to cultivate is a healthier relationship with the exchange that when we bring nutrients into our life, it's going to make us optimal, you know, our op- operate optimally because we're organic. Mm-hmm. You know, we are a machine that is made of organic material. So we have to consume organic material. So if we're not eating the balance of an omnivorous perspective, mm-hmm. because people can oftentimes be like, I'm going to go vegan and then being vegan is really hard. So they'll become a junk food vegan. Mm -hmm. And then we see a lot of really unhealthy people in that aspect. And so it's about cultivating an omnivorous perspective with foods that are going to have nutrients in them. So that's going to be organic vegetables and fruits, grass fed meats, you know, pasture raised meats, and just getting back to basics essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad you even mentioned the orthorexia because then there's people like me who I went from um, calorie counting to lose weight in counting macros and then went straight to trying paleo and keto. But because I did the calorie counting in very restrictive calories for so long, my body couldn't even handle that many vegetables and fruits and everything. And I w- I got SIBO. So mm-hmm. it was like I was at a very unstable point that I had to start eating more of the processed food. And even though I tried getting like more pure processed food, but still I was like so, ob- I went from the calorie obsessed to the clean obsessed to then finding healing my SIBO and now finding balance. And the balance feels amazing. And it's like, once you find that balance and you educate yourself on not only what is good for all humans, but what's good for you, I feel like that's when you finally can realize that food doesn't control you, that it's here to help and help you live longer, help you live stronger, and really just feel better overall. So how do you look at the individual when it comes to these types of recommendations? It's pretty intensive, actually. If I'm working with a nutrition therapy client, it's not going to be a one and done, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have just one specific protocol that I recommend. And having 
been a previous clinician and an instructor for the Nutritional Therapy Association, it's really important for me to talk about the nuance of every single body. Every body it should always be seen as an individual. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their own roadmap. You're going to have your own microbiome roadmap. You're going to have your own, you know, emotional roadmap. You're going to have your upbringing, you know, that's, that's also a part of what your toxic load can look like. And then of course, there's going to be your capability, even as an individual, what can you handle monetarily? What can you handle emotionally? And it's just a really complicated and nuanced process. Mm -hmm. This is why I never recommend people getting into the hard stuff by themselves. Yes, for sure. You need a practitioner. Oh yeah. As much as you need a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. I think often because there's so much free information on the internet, everyone's like, I can do this on my own. And then they'll read one podcast or listen to one podcast and they think that they're an expert Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, Chris Masterjohn said this. And it's like, yeah, he's great, but he's not talking about X, Y, and Z over here either. So I like to think of it as the podcast, the articles, the books as bringing awareness and maybe even educating in a sense. Like I remember I learned about SIBO from a podcast. However, I didn't do the crazy SIBO diet by myself. I went to a gastroenterologist who had me do the SIBO test, who I actually went on an antibiotic, which I know antibiotics usually screw up your gut, but this one actually helped me. I took the antibiotic. It was one that wasn't invasive. It stayed in your gut. After a week, I was good, could start eating my veggies, have not had an issue since. So it was like, because I went to her and I was also working with a ancestral dietitian, I had the the resources that helped me figure out what was best for me. And someone else, maybe they couldn't have taken that antibiotic or they couldn't have started eating vegetables or whatever. So it's, it's like, use the podcast, use the articles as awareness and as education, but don't, don't jump into it thinking that's your solution. Absolutely not. And the thing is, is that if we're not operating from a space of holism, like Mm -hmm. you did, then we're also not allowing abundance to come into our life, right? Because Western medicine is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so are all the other modalities. And there's nothing wrong. There's so many women that feel like they have to justify that they took an antibiotic. You should never have to justify that. It was life-saving for you. Exactly. And it's like, yeah, there were times when I definitely didn't need antibiotics when I you know, when I took them when I was in college and I had a little sinus infection and it was from, sure. yeah. And it was like, I had a little runny nose and I got an antibiotic because I was, I wasn't aware. I didn't even know that there was what they could do. So it was like, as I have started listening to more people in this community and really just bringing more awareness to myself and doing more research myself. And like we said, the research could be deadly, but if you're at least educating yourself on, well, why is this of you? And you become curious. And then if you do become ill, then you could make the decision, well, okay, this is a sinus infection. What happened last time I got a sinus infection? Well, I took an antibiotic and then I got another sinus infection. Well, why don't I try, you know, using a nasal rinse or doing this and that? And then I try it. Oh, what do you know? I don't have sinus infections anymore. So it's kind of like you have to go through that decision making process. But once again, it's like you don't have all the answers inside of you. <laughs> you really don't. And but that's the thing is it's all about education and awareness, right? So it's it's important to listen to podcasts, it's important to read books, it's important to experiment but we also have to check our egos at some point right because yes. we won't have all of the answers mm-hmm, for sure yeah. and another thing i want to talk about um definitely is that your the book title happy weight that if you don't know danielle and you haven't heard her on a podcast before and you just hear happy weight maybe you're thinking another diet book however when you dive into it it is not the case at all. So why don't you go into why you decided that to be the name and how I remember I opened the pages and I was like, this is the book I need. And I was like journaling about it and it was just eye opening. So how did that name strike a chord with you when you were deciding? I felt like happy weight was fluid. 
that you can find, you know, cause I tell you to ditch the scale in the book, mm -hmm. right? Because it's yep. just not, it's not even about the number, but happy weight is it's, it's a philosophy. It's an embodiment. It's that you can be happy no matter what weight you're at, because your body is going to change throughout your entire life, mm -hmm. your entire life. You're going to have, you know, your origin story, right? So like when you had HA and you were undernourished, yep. you know, you've got that story and now you've had HA recovery mm -hmm. and your body has changed. And maybe in the future, it's possible your body's going to change again. It's just that we're ever evolving, we're ever flowing. And I don't think that we should ever put ourselves in a box. So I feel yes. like no matter where your body's at, you have to learn to love yourself. And there's going to be a lot of people that are like, anti beauty standard, you know, and that's the thing is I'm not a bad feminist to say that I am beautiful at any weight. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I think it's so important, especially like when I was extremely underweight, some, I was getting so many compliments. Like I remember from people I love, and I was always very small, but even putting myself in an unnatural state, I was getting even more compliments than ever. And it was like, oh, wow, I'm getting, you know, this is good. Even though I knew what I was doing was bad. I knew that exercising five, six days a week when only eating like 1200 calories, like I knew that wasn't good because I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good physically. My bones ached. I couldn't sleep. I was hungry all the time. I was mean. Like it was just not good. Yet because I kept getting that compliment and the compliments and I kept seeing the number on the scale go down, it was like, wow, my, it's like, I didn't feel good physically, but and it, mentally I didn't even feel good, but because I was getting attention, I felt like it was fine. And then I get, went into to the journey of gaining the weight and I, I slowly gained weight since the lowest point to before I started my journey. And with that, I, I learned a lot. That was a big learning phase before making the big, you know, commitment to the actual all in, get your period back journey. But I didn't feel, I never felt as happy as I did when I was, I remember I was by myself living in Tampa, didn't have a roommate for like the first time in my life and going through this journey alone. And I had only had myself to stay accountable. And I, none of my clothes fit. But at the same time, I felt so beautiful because I was finally happy and I finally didn't feel like I had all that pressure on myself, that I was just going to let myself be for the first time ever, you know, since starting college, since turning into a woman, really. And I didn't even know what womanhood felt like. And then when I got that first drop of blood, I was like, oh my God, I started crying. I'm like, I promise God, like I will never let this go away. You know, like that type of thing. You're just so, I like clung on to it because I was like, now I know what it feels like to be a woman. And this is just the beginning. And I think that what you're saying about happy white, it is amazing because I don't weigh myself. I'll weigh myself once in a while and it's really just when I'm at the doctors you know because I have to go get my blood tested or whatever so I have an idea of how much I weigh but it's like that doesn't matter it does not matter at all I see myself now gaining more muscle than I had when I was a year ago this time because I'm str strength training again and I probably weigh more or less I don't know but it's like it still doesn't matter. The number doesn't matter. It's how you feel. Do you feel strong? Do you feel capable? Do you feel loved? And I think that your book really helped encourage me to continue on my journey for that. Oh, that makes me so happy. I feel like my heart just got hugged really big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that that you uh, feel that too. Um, so yeah, I really do mean all of this. And I, I want to go into now, what do you see? How do you see people kind of snapping out of this then? So once they read your book, once they're in your course, what does it look like when someone, when you see someone like me who had this mindset of, you know, being small, counting calories and looking like the, the goal to be the Instagram model to then transforming and realizing I am perfect how I am. What does that look like? 
It's different for every single person. And I've seen so many different nuances in terms of how, who it has affected and why. And, you know, I guess there's such a wide spectrum, but the reality is, is that it builds confidence. Mm -hmm. It builds confidence in you and the relationship you have with your body. It builds confidence in your relationship with food and how you kind of look at the world and how you're like, you just come into this space where you stop caring about standards and you start caring about your actual happiness and your yeah. health, you know, cause a lot of women don't realize that they're sacrificing themselves every day. Mm -hmm. They're sacrificing their health. They're sacrificing their happiness. They're sacrificing their relationships with people. Right. Cause you said there was behavior change. Yeah. That came oh, with yeah. it. You know, it could be sacrificing just anything anything that wants to try and bring abundance into your life, you're sacrificing that. And so when, after people have read the book and some people have read it loads of times, mm -hmm. right? Because they're like, wait, it didn't hit right the first time. Yeah. I need to keep reading it and keep reading it and keep reading it. And that's why I love it. It's even inspirational to me mm -hmm. and I wrote it, you know? So it's because like you one have of different those moments where you need it. You need to totally. read it. Totally. It's like, oh yeah, okay, that's that's right. I need to feel that way. And so it just really kind of is this, this text that provides women with this, it's almost like a friend, a friend mm -hmm. that's making you feel like you can do it. And that's what I've seen from so many of the readers is that they feel like their life has changed forever because it's given them the confidence that they didn't have before in whatever realm that they're working towards. Yeah. So. That's amazing. Do you have any, do you think you will ever write another book in the future? Or do you think this is just kind of like one of your, the true book that told your story and you're just going to focus on your, your business now? You know, I always want to write more because I feel like writing is an important part of my life. I think that next time around, I won't write unless I'm contracted. Yeah. Indie publishing is it's a whole oh, thing. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> it totally is. And I really immediately wanted to do it again. And I just kept feeling resistance and it didn't feel like the right time. So I definitely want to again, but it's going to be, it'll probably be more in the realm of what I think wellness should look like. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. And I, yeah. <laughs> And like you said in the beginning, the public speaking that comes with it, the energy draining. Yeah, you writing, a, I mean, I've never written a book, but I know people who have. And it's like, it not only takes so much energy to come up with the words, to dedicate the time, especially when you want it to be as powerful as the message that you are creating. It's not like you're just writing a fiction book. And I'm not saying fiction books aren't powerful because they are and I love them. But it's like this honesty to make a movement within women and health that you need to devote so much time and energy and then you have a business too. So I guess going in that uh, direction, how do you do all of the things you do? What does your day look like? How do you manage your time doing writing your books and being active on social media while running all of these businesses? You know, I guess I've really tried to equate it to exercising any muscle, mm -hmm. right? Or anything that you do in your life when you're trying to get good at something. That's what I try and do every day with my work is like, okay, I, I, I have to stay motivated. I have a purpose. I, there's something that I'm trying to accomplish here and being a generator. So if you're into human design, I'm, I'm a true generator and so I do have boundless energy. Mm -hmm. Like it just is there in any given moment I can tap into it. And I think being authentic is important to me. Yeah. So when I mentor women, I tell them about what it's like to run a purpose driven business. And it, because when you feel the purpose behind your business, you feel in complete alignment and you don't feel resistance. You don't feel overwhelmed. You just, you, you almost are addicted to it in a way because it brings as much energy into your life as you're giving out. And that's that equitable exchange. And so I just have, and of course I don't have dogs or kids. Mm -hmm. My husband and I are just a, you know, 
power couple in our thirties, you mm-hmm. know, just like grinding every day. We love our work. So it's just that thing that I just have time to dedicate to it. And that's how my partnership works as well. But I think at the end of the day, it really is about the things that continue to bring me energy. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like going back to the book. I won't do it again unless I'm contracted because you need that equitable exchange. Yeah, right. And so And writing a book, it took eight months of my life to write that book. It took every energy and every trigger of my existence to put into that book. And so people don't realize that when you put work out into the world, it, it's a part of your soul, Mm -hmm. right? And so being able to have that flow and I have that flow with my courses right now and my mentorships, and it's really Uh, life-giving. And so when you get paid for your work, it's easy to show up anytime. Oh yeah. So that's amazing. I want to, I've shared on this podcast and with guests, I want to eventually um, start a business in the health space. What would you give um, someone like me? What would you share for advice in how to kind of accomplish that, especially with me, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, So I guess this is more of a selfish question, but I know there's people out there listening that want to know the same thing. How would you, what would you advise even to do to make that, that first step in order to someday start your business? You have to get clear on your intention. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you don't have an intention, if there's no purpose there, if you're not trying to have something that's very passion driven, then there's really no point, right? Then you're just trying to achieve something that's elusive because you might be comparing yourself to another person, Mm -hmm. which happens a lot. Oh yeah. We see these like boss babes and we think their life is perfect. And then when we talk to them, we actually realize they're empty and vapid, right? And they're just trying to achieve something that's that's not actually life giving. Mm -hmm. So you're, if you're going to start a business, you have to get clear on what is it that I'm trying to do? And I really try to speak to people, especially in the wellness space or anyone who's trying to be a service provider, Mm -hmm. right? So if you're, even if you're a business coach, you're a service provider. If you're a service provider, you need to be able to have, what is that passion? What is that purpose? What are you trying to accomplish? What is that exchange? And once you have that idea, it's really easy from there. Your business idea will come to you in a second. You'll have your niche because you're speaking from your heart and your experience. You, I mean, as a sales engineer, you're, you're pretty pragmatic already. (laughs) So systems are really easy Mm -hmm. for you. So sales forecasting would be easy for you. Goal setting would be easy for you. I think the thing is, is a lot of people have the fear of the unknown, Yeah. but my biggest, like throughout all of my mentorships, I always talk about stepping through the fear. Yes. I love that. I really love that. I just recorded a podcast sitting here in my closet last night and I just started doing video as we're doing now. And I was like, you know what, Emily, we're going to start doing video, even though I'm in my closet because I have a train as everyone on this podcast knows that I live literally probably 10, 15 feet away from it. It's on, um, it's called the rail. So there's like a walking path by it. And I was like, we're going to sit here and we're going to record on a video. Maybe I'll post it to Facebook one day. I don't know. We're just going to do it. And I'm going to talk about why I, I almost quit my podcast back in, um, back in January. And it was because of being afraid of making that next step and being afraid of what other people would think. Because For one thing, one thing that I realized with this, sharing my journey about amenorrhea, about gaining weight, I work with all men and I public, I have a podcast where any of my coworkers, anyone who, you know, any of my family can come and listen to this, they can read my story, but I love doing this and I love being able to help people and especially going through something that I've gone through. And just whether it be sharing my story or something that clicks. So I was like, am I really going to let fear of someone bringing it up that I do this and it may be being uncomfortable make me stop? 
And that's when I really had to have a conversation with myself is how can I step through this? Am I going to keep going or am I going to cower? And ever since then, it's been like, okay, we're not going to give up. You're, you know why you're doing this. And there have been a couple weeks where I got busy with work. You know, I was moving, all this crazy stuff with coronavirus where I haven't been as regular. And sure, sometimes it's like, oh, it is kind of nice to relax. But then I'm like, well, why am I doing this? Because I love it. And I think what you just said is super important, stepping through that fear, making sure that you know, like we are going to have so many things that we're going to need to step through our fear for in life, whether that be like relationships, your career, your health. So I love that you preach that message. I really do. Thank you. Yeah, it's super important because the thing is, is that everyone's like, be fearless, but fearlessness only exists in a very small percent of the population. And those people are typically neurologically having some sort of impairment, right? Mm -hmm. There's no actual ability for humans to access fearlessness. Our amygdala does not allow us Mm -hmm. to do that. That's our reptilian part of our brain for those of you who don't know what the Mm -hmm. amygdala is that are listening, but it's where our fight or flight response exists. And so we're always going to have this part of our neurological wiring that is going to protect us from something that's new. Mm -hmm. And so change can be really difficult for a lot of people until you get to that space where you're like, oh, I'm okay. I'm Mm -hmm. okay with fear and I'm going to operate it in in any way. And the thing is that people often don't realize is that anxiety and excitement can be very often confused in the Mm -hmm. body. And so turning anxiety into excitement and realizing that those butterflies or or, you know, you're excited. This is excitement. These are things that are happening. And that's not the case for everything. There are some true things. But I'm glad you said that because there have been, I have had anxiety for a really long time, but it was, you know, school school was had I had so much anxiety because I had to get I was afraid I was going to flunk out of engineering like you never know I didn't know what it was going to be like and then once I got past those hurdles realizing that I could do it okay well now I'm afraid I'm not going to get a job and having anxiety about starting my first internship and then about student loans and all this that's real anxiety but then when I started feeling that anxiety when it came to my passions It was that exciting feeling. It was that excited feeling, but it was like because I've had so many phases of anxiety, it was like, oh no, this is anxiety. This is it's time to take a break. When what you're saying is like, sure, there are times you need a break. Of course. Everyone has you can't run yourself to the ground, but you can also just use that excitement for momentum or to create something wonderful. Absolutely, because more often than not people have no idea, you know, what you don't know, Mm -hmm. right? That's, that's a huge fear with women when they're starting a business is they're like, I don't know enough. I'm not enough. I don't have enough. I don't have all this experience, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, you do because you're there. You decided to start a business and people don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And my mom was always a huge proponent of fake it till you make it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so it was just always that ability of like, okay, I'm just going to pull from an authentic space and hope that it works. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of 10, it's going to work. Yeah. And the awkward times are going to be a learning experience, mm-hmm. right? But sure. more often you already have enough and you already are enough. It's just, yeah, enjoying that excitement, stepping through that fear, taking a pause when you need to find creativity, but really just committing. Consistency is key. Yes, so. for sure. I've heard that a few times um, the past couple of weeks. So I think that's that's my cue. Um, <laughs> but before we get into the last couple questions, I, I, I do want to ask something that I ask all my guests, and that is, what does health mean to you? Obviously, we talked about health in the beginning of this, but I really just love asking this question because the way it comes out of everyone's mouth is completely different, even though we might, you know, you might have some similar thoughts of someone else because they're an expert in, I know um, that they went to like NTP, but at the same time, your whole idea of it could be completely 
completely different when it comes out of your mouth. So what is health to you? Health to me is very different from anyone who graduates from the NTA. Um, That's why I'm like the outsider and the pariah of the community, because I believe that health is freedom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think, you know, when you're in, when you're in the ancestral health space, like health to a lot of people is a construct, Mm -hmm. you know, it's subscribing to something, subscribing to a diet, subscribing to a modality, subscribing to this one workout or this one guru or this one influencer. So there's a lot of subscription and power given away in that space. And for me, health is about freedom. It's about freedom of food, right? Mm -hmm. So there's food freedom, body freedom, sexuality freedom, you know, being able to feel like you are actually free. So that has to do with anything that is civil rights. So that's going to be, you know, anything having to do with gender, race, identity, um, spiritual freedom, uh, even talking about your right to die. So talking about, you know, having a good death and those types of things. So for me, wellness is a 100% embodiment of all of the things that make you feel like you're just inherently free in this life. Amazing. Yeah. And now to our final question, how do you live honestly? And My podcast is obviously named Honest Living Podcast, and I made it this name because I love hearing about what people do to make them feel like they're living their life in line with their values. Obviously, every day, you know, we're not going to live perfectly in line with our values. We are not, you know, we cannot perform every single day being quote unquote perfect, our perfect version of ourselves. But what are things that you do to make you feel like you're living honestly? Communication, 100%. So honest lines of communication with my significant other, with my friends, with my family. I don't hide anything from anyone at any given time. I am the most transparent person that I'm sure a lot of people will ever meet, right? (laughs) Even the things I share on social media, people are like, this woman just giving it all away, you know? So I just think like living in authentic communication is what keeps me honest. Because if I ever get in those moments where I'm not being honest with myself, it's because I'm not speaking my truth. Amazing. That's, I've said amazing so many times. Wow. But that's true. I love it. Me too. It's my favorite word. (laughs) (laughs) It's how I feel. It really is. I love you. I love everything you're sharing to all the listeners, how can they find you after we finish this podcast? Yes. Well, I love you too, Emily. Oh, I feel you. like we're soul sisters. Yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so fun. And uh, if you guys want to find me, you can find me on Instagram. So my name is really long, but you'll see it in the podcast here, but it's Danielle and Della Valley. So you can find me there on Insta. Or you can go to my website, which is daniellevalley.com, and that has all of the projects that I do. So it has access to your Wellness Academy, access to Sacred Feminine Academy. You can watch my Women of Impact video, um, an interview I did with Lisa Bilyeu. You can find my book, Happy Weight, and kind of just be in the know of all of the things that I have going on, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yep, but it's all great. And I listen to your podcast and... Oh, that's Uh, right. I forgot about that. (laughs) But it's really great. You have so many different avenues that I think it's important to be able, like we were talking about the importance of the online space to be able to reach people in various aspects. So thank you so much for being here. I really meant everything I said. I think you're incredible and I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you for your time. This was wonderful. Thanks for listening and remember to tune in next week to continue learning how you can live your best and most honest life.